Stitchy Tube. Settle down and watch Stitchy Tube. Hey everybody. My hair's kind of crazy today. I spent some time in the attic digging through things to show you. Um, happy Memorial Day weekend. We're having a pretty relaxing weekend. We're kind of expecting a tropical depression. Um, or we're in it, I don't know. But it's been kind of stormy off and on here in Mississippi. And that's okay, I like stormy weather. It feels very cozy inside. It's good stitching weather. I wanna start as always with my questions for the week from the last video and from other videos that have kind of straggled in this week. The first question was from Wooly Girl and she wanted to know, who is that black and white cat? And a lot of people have asked about the black and white cat and you can see him over my shoulder here. Let me grab him real quick. Hey Fitz. Come be famous. Oh dear. This is Fitz. Can you say hi? Um, so this is another, uh, I guess, installment of my segment, let me tell you about my cat. And this is not t technically my cat. This is my husband's cat. His name is Fitz. He's about just a little over a year old. We did not really adopt him. Um, Someone at my husband's work had a kitten last summer. Do you, do you want to stay here and be famous or do you want to go? He's very, very sweet. Yeah, he says, I'm going to go. But he's going to sit behind us. Let's see if I can give him a little room. There he is. All right. So um, my husband works with someone and she was going on vacation and they had this new kitten that was just like right at about eight weeks old. And... She asked my husband, she knew that we fostered kittens. She said, can you just watch him for the for five days while we're on vacation? And Steve said, sure. So he said, Teresa, I'm fostering a kitten <laughs> for five days. And I was like, that's, that's great. Um, what's the story? And he told me. And um, so he one day I came home and he was holding Fitz. And Fitz was little, little black and white, very cute kitten. And um, Steve really, really liked him right away. And so the five days kind of came and went. And he said, okay, well, you know, she said she'll be over this weekend to pick up Fitz. And I was like, okay, that's fine. And another week goes by. And he said, well, they've been kind of busy and they just haven't been able to get over here. And I told her it was no big deal. And then like another week goes by and he's like, well, okay, so she's blah, blah, blah. And this is when she's coming and blah, 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 blah. And then more and more time goes by and I'm like, is Fitz our cat now? And he was like, no, 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 no. She just, you know, okay, here's the deal. You know, she's kind of allergic. And, um, or no, her boyfriend was allergic and so they don't know and they kind of want him to be an outside cat. And I told her that outside cats typically, you know, can sometimes get hit by cars or they can get diseases and they can get attacked by other animals. And so um, now she's just not sure what they're gonna do. And I was like, okay, no big deal. He can hang out. And more time goes by. And um, uh, I'm like, okay, so he's, is, is he our cat? Cause it's, a, I mean, I just wanna know. And eventually he was like, he's our cat. He's my cat, he, is what he said, he's my cat. And so um, he's our cat and it's fine. Um, she just really hesitated, you know, once, once she wasn't really sure about having him be an outdoor cat. She just, she just kind of felt like he might get killed and she didn't want that to happen. He's very, very sweet, very snuggly, very loving, very sweet. He's still got a lot of kitten in him. And so um, our other cats get kind of annoyed by him sometimes because he's, he's kind of rambunctious, but he'll, he's calming down and he's really nice and he's, he's gonna end up being our biggest cat. And so right now he kind of fights with some of them because, let's see, Fitz? He fights with some of them because he's just got a lot of energy and that's fine. He's very, very nice. So that's Fitz. Fitz is one of our cats. Okay, Anna Goyea, I think is how you say her name, wanted some tips for stitching on silk gauze. I love to stitch on silk gauze, but I'm going to actually film a separate tutorial on that sometime soon on what, how to do silk gauze because I, I was gonna do a little video and stick it here in the middle of this video and then I thought, you know what, it's just, it'll be more searchable for people if I just shoot a separate video and, and so I'm gonna do that sometime soon, Anna. NH Shelley, wanted to know how is Hoffman distributing releasing Prairie Schooler charts? How do they decide how the Prairie Schooler charts get released? I'm gonna put their email address below. They are the only people allowed to reproduce the Prairie Schooler charts. They have a contract with Pam um, 
to re-release her charts. She's not doing anything. All she does is, is just steal her charts and she gets paid when the charts sell. And so um, Hoffman first started with the charts that seemed to be most in demand by like the ones that were commanding the highest prices on eBay. And so um, they're, then they kind of are started to do seasonal stuff. And the, as they get suggestions and requests, they're kind of seeing like which ones are the most requested. And so you can actually email them if there's are some Prairie Schooler charts that you would love to see re-released and let them know, you know, things. I, it's not a promise. It's not a guarantee that they'll do that. It's just like, it's a way for you to vote and say, hey, I'd really love to see this one re-released. And um, that's really cool. Jerry B wanted to know about variegated threads. And she she's just started using variegated threads. She wanted to know if you need to start and stop with the same like color. So like, let's say you've got a thread that goes from from you know dark red to medium red to light red. If you end it on light red, do you need to start with the light red on your next run? I know there are some people who do that. I don't, and I don't, I haven't really found, I used to do it that way because that's kind of what I was told is what, how you should do it. And I just really, I just get more and go. It just, I did not find that it makes a market, a market difference to kind of make those, that continuous, but it's up to you. You can totally do that. Some people, if they're doing, you know, like kind of a one color sampler, they like to do it that way just for continuity, but it's up to you. There's no, it's not right or wrong to do it either way. Uh, Lori Jones wanted to know about squaring up your linen. So uh, the idea is how do you make sure that your cut of linen is, has got kind of 90 degree angles. And a great way to do it is to pull a thread. So measure your fabric and then you can, with a needle, um, kind of, hang on just a second, pick out <clears throat> one thread at the measurement that you need. And you can just use a needle to kind of pull that up and pull that thread out. And you may have to snip it a few times, but you pull out the whole warp or weft <coughs> and um, then you follow along where that hole was left. And you can do that on all four sides and then that way you know that your fabric is totally square. I am not bothered by not square linen. I'm pretty good at cutting it because I cut been cutting linen for a long, long time. And I used to cut yards and yards and yards and yards every day. And I can almost do it by feel. But um, if you like it nice and neat, that's one way to do it is to pull a thread. Um, okay, Gina Snyder wanted to know, can you wash silk threads? I have washed silk threads. If you do any reading or asking of, you know, kind of people in the industry, a lot of people will say, never wash your silk threads. When they dye silk threads, they get them wet in water and there have been times where I'm like, you know what, I've been stitching on this a long time. I feel like it's kind of grungy, you know, maybe I shouldn't eat eating all those Cheetos and Oreos and things while I was in uh, chicken wings. <laughs> I'm trying to think of like the messiest, like corn on the cob. But um, sometimes I've washed them and I've not ever had a problem. What I think can happen sometimes is the more you kind of agitate those threads, they can get kind of a fuzzy look to them. And some people will say that it weakens the thread. It's up to you. Can you wash them? Yes, you can. May you wash them? Yes, you can. <laughs> and it's up to you. Some people will wash their threads ahead of time if they, you know, kind of want to just their, make sure their threads are nice and clean or make sure that they're color fast. But um, always refer to the you know, if it's a, if it's a hand dyed silk or if it's a commercial silk, you can always contact the people that sell it or make it and ask, can I wash this? And they may have some suggestions for you. Some of them are going to say color fast and some of them will say not color fast, but I've never, I've never really had a problem washing silk. I know you're not supposed to, but remember I'm a no rules person. So if you want to wash it, why not? All right, and Betty Sweet had a great idea. She said, can you give us a fabric cut tutorial? I'm always confused with how fabric is cut and I was like oh that's an awesome idea so I made I made some visual aids and here's the first one okay so pretend this is a yard of linen you can see along the top it's 55 inches wide so that's the width of the bolt and then 36 inches is the yard cut so when a shop orders linen typically a lot of shops will order a yard at a time um, unless it's something that they're selling a lot of them, they may order multiple yards. But the distributor will cut inches off the bolt. 
So if you order a yard, they, they measure to 36 inches and then they cut across and, that, and that's 36 by 55 inches. Shops can order incrementally. And so like sometimes I would have somebody who would be like, you know what, I have this piece that I'm gonna need a yard and a half continuous cut. And I as a shop could order a one and a half yards or 1.25 yards or whatever. And, and the distributor would just charge me accordingly. And so if you ever need a piece bigger you know, like if it's 55 inches wide, but you need it 47 inches the other way, ask your shop to get it in. It, it's probably going to be a special order. There aren't, I don't, you know, there are some shops that have bolts of linen, but it's very expensive in, unless it's something you sell a lot of. Just ask um, and they can maybe accommodate you. Okay, so you've got 56, 55 by 36. If you cut it this way, oops, like that, the half inch mark here, that's a, that's a fat half. So a fat half equals 27 and a half by 36 inches, okay? And then if you cut it that half this way, you get a fat quarter. And a fat quarter is typically 27 and a half by 18. And then if you cut that quarter into half this way, you get a fat eighth. And a fat eighth is typically 13 and three quarters by 18. You can pause this if you wanna write this information down. I think it's good information for people to know. And fat quarters tend to be uh, a very practical size of fabric. I sold a lot of fat quarters in my shop. A lot of people get fat quarters of hand dyed linens. It's just a nice size. Most projects will fit on a fat quarter or part of a fat quarter. Um, I, as a shop, I didn't do custom cuts on hand dyed linen just because the scraps got to be so expensive. I did custom cuts on other fabrics, but I would charge more per square inch because you end up with these leftover weird sizes that kind of, I would, I would sell them, but you don't really get a lot for them because they're kind of scrappy do. And so, um, you can, you can sometimes ask your shop if they'll cut to size, but honestly, if you stitch a lot, just get a fat quarter. It's going to be less per square inch and... You're, you'll use it for something else. It's just kind of fun to help increase your, increase your stash. So those are the fats. And now I will say 55 inches width is most linens and um, a lot of the even weaves. Ada's off the bolt typically, I think it's are 45 inches. And so this number then would become 22 and a half inches by 36 and 22 by 18, and then 11 by 18. That would be Ada's. Okay, so that's the fats. Skinnies are when you take a yard and it's 55 inches this way and then 36 inches off the bolt and you cut it that way. So a skinny half is 18 inches, right? You cut this in half by 55, 18 by 55 inches. And um, there are a lot of like tall and skinny pieces that work really well on a skinny half. Not every shop will um, cut a skinny half for you, but a lot of them will because they can sell these. If you cut this in half this way, you end up with two fat quarters. And so it's really not too big of a deal to, to cut off a skinny half for somebody if you've got it as a shop, but ask your shop if they're willing to do that. Um, and then a skinny quarter, if, if that's something that you would wanna do, is nine by 55 inches because you would, you would cut it in half again this way. Um, a skinny eighth would be four and a half inches by 55. I don't know why you would want a size like that, but I don't know. Um, okay, so those are the skinnies. Now, some shops, if they have bolts, actually I'm gonna use this as my, as my illustration because I have kind of a funny story about this. So I grew up ne near the Nordic Needle. It was, I would walk there. I, I would walk there with my allowance money and my babysitting money and I would buy charts. And I didn't know anything about, you know, when I started, I didn't know anything about buying fabric off the bolt. They sold it off the bolt because they were a distributor. So they had the fabrics that they had, they had large amounts, which was really cool. But I had always, you know, bought my stuff at like, you know, craft stores or department stores. And so a lot of the things I had worked on up until a point I had worked with the, the Ada that came with the kit or, um, you know, the fabric that came with the kit. And so I remember 
seeing, um, how old was I? Like maybe 16 or 17, Teresa Wensler's Carousel. And I'm going to show it to you because I stitched it. So I stitched this when I was, you know, 18, I think. is Well, no, I finished it in 90, so I was 20 by the time I finished it. And here is this piece. Let's see if I can get it better shot it's hard to not do the glare it's hard to not do the glare okay you get the idea super cool so i saw this piece and i was like holy cow man that's amazing that's beautiful like that's one of the prettiest things i've ever seen and i bought the chart and it's a crazy amount of colors and blending and there's metallics i don't think there are any beads but it's really really cool okay so I saw that and I was like, okay, I got to have that chart. And I read the chart and it said, you know, that it used, what was it? Like, um, some linen, some color of linen, 20, I think it was a 28 count linen of some sort. And you know, it, it gave you the size. And so I got something on my face. So I went to the counter at the North needle and I said, hi, I, um, would like, fabric for this piece um, it calls for this linen how much is that a yard because I, I didn't know and she said that's you know $50 a yard or whatever it was and I was like because I was babysitting for a dollar an hour <laughs> so that was a lot that was a lot of babysitting jobs and because um, they sold it off the bolt and so you could buy nine inches off the bolt and so it would be 55 by nine inches but you could only buy it off the bolt. You couldn't buy fat quarters or fat halves or anything. So I was like, okay, I can't afford that. So I went to, oh, what was it called? Northwest Fabrics. Do you remember that? I don't think those exist anymore. And they had a sale on fabrics that were on the bolt. And they had Kaki Davos of Prairie Schooler Santa fame. And so I got a yard. It was on sale and I think it was mismarked. I got a yard for $4.50. I didn't know you could buy incremental pieces of a yard. I didn't know with the Nordic Needle that I could have bought, you know, an 18 inch by 55 inch piece. So I got for $4.50, I got this Khaki Davos. I don't know if you can really see it. There you go. There you go. Um, so I stitched it over one on 18 count Khaki Davos. <laughs> and it made me crazy. It's so pretty. So that's my story about my Teresa Wensler. Um, so you can just, you know, if you're ever not sure on a fabric cut and you're at a store, just ask. Ask for help. You're not dumb. You're not dumb. It's their job to help you. So, okay. So that's all the questions for this week. If you have questions about needlework or life or candy, I really like candy, ask below. Okay, let's do the stash. Flash! I like to take my time. I mean that when I like to do a thing, I like to take my time to do it right. I mean I just might make mistakes if I should have to hurry up. I like to take my time to do it right. My Mr. Roger, my Mr. Rogers Funko Pop came this week from Amazon. Look at how cute he is. Do you see his little sneakers and the trolley and the little bags under his eyes? He's so cute. So I have my Mr. Rogers stamps. Now I have my Mr. Rogers Funko Pop. I'm looking for a Mr. Rogers t-shirt. Would love a Mr. Rogers t-shirt. His movie, the movie um, documentary, Won't You Be My Neighbor, comes out June 8th. And I'm hoping that Hattiesburg gets it. We're kind of a small city. Um, we have a pretty nice movie theater with the new, like, you know, put your feet up kind of seats. But it's hard to say if we get it. I'm, I got to watch, watch, watch. We may not get it right away June 8th. I may have to wait a week or two if we get it at all. But I'm really hoping to see it. Um, I think, I mean, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. So, Mr. Rogers. I got, so this week I was talking to my friend Kathy. And she's working on a Marjorie Massey piece. Which is really pretty. And she's doing it on, um, I think she said, Lakeside Linens. Um, porcelain but she wanted to know had I seen the new DMC color she said do you have those and I was like I don't think I do I don't think I ever got the new DMC colors so of course I said do you want me to go look and see if I can find them because her lo her nearest DMC source is a, a big drive for her in Milwaukee so I called her from Hobby Lobby and I'm like okay these are you know some of these colors are pretty awesome so I went ahead and got one each of the new colors except number 23 that they didn't have 
I even got kind of the crazy ones because you never know. You never know. And DMC is one of those things that like, don't we all just want a complete collection of it? So I got her some too. And um, she just wanted kind of the samplery kind of colors. But there are some really nice, like this one is number eight. And it's a really nice brown for samplers. They're, um, one of the things that they did, let's see if I can pick them out of here. I always feel like, have felt like Hobby Lobby was kind of missing the boat on purples. Um, because a lot of the hand dyed companies have really nice purples. And DMC just sometimes when, when as a designer, I've tried to convert a purple. It's like, you know what? There really isn't a purple that matches this. They have all of these are new purples and they're they're nice purples i think the eggplant and blueberry are some of the names of them but um if you like purple i like purple i mean i'm not a purple person but i like it they also had a lot of these you know kind of bright and shiny you know kind of chartreuse yellows and kind of springy greens and things and that's you know that's probably an area that they were missing out on too um you know some of these are real nice this one's very pale it's it's cool but um here's like a new Here's a new, this one's looking a lot more red on the screen, but it's kind of a rusty red, which is, is a great. And, and like I said, they've got some nice, they got some nice browns. They've got some nice grays. Oop, here's another gray. Whoop, oh. And so there just are some nice colors. These are some nice kind of magenta-y colors. They were missing number 23. And so I looked at Michael's and Joanne's for number 23 to see if they had it and Michaels didn't have any of the new um didn't have any of the new DMC colors which is fine and our Joann's hilariously does not organize the DMC one bit like at all it is not organized and they even have the little number you know the number cards that slip in the shelves and they have them either flipped over or covered up with something else you can kind of see bits of them peeking out they're just like whatever they stitchers don't care uh yeah we care <laughs> It makes it impossible to find colors. I did not see that they had the new ones. Um, I got this really cool set of Victorian model sampler threads. I got my first order a while back and I was so tickled. I went ahead and got this, um, you know, the primitive sampler or whatever club that she runs. And Nancy is so, so nice. And so this was the most recent set of club colors. They're very, 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 very nice colors. I think my favorite one is this one which is called bronze leaf and it's just kind of a grungy kind of bronzy gold green color very nice uh nancy is a peach and if you have questions she answers you almost right away you can find her on ebay but if you want to join her monthly club i think you can do them in sixes or twelves i'm going to put a link below to her website where you can find out information just look on the right hand side of the page and there's a box with information about how to join the club and I'd highly recommend it. The threads are very nice. I have not used them yet, but it is my plan to um, kind of throw some stitches in something and see how they go. Okay, last stash flash was, uh, I was at Jen's a couple of days ago and um, you know, I went to drop some kits and charts off for her shop. And I went of course to spend time with her. Really, I went to see the baby chickens, which I will put a clip at the end of this video so you can see how the baby chickens are doing. They're great, they're awesome. But she, while I was there, the delivery man came up the walk and delivered a box from Hoffman Distributing, and she had ordered a set of these Prairie Schooler cards. And I'm not sure if this is a new set. It's it's mini card set F. Pam used to des design these little cards every time she had like a new set come out. She typically released set charts at four at a time, or when the Santa came out five at a time, twice a year. And so she would release these little cards. So I'm gonna show you an example. Like this one is a little rabbit. This one was released in 2012, it says on the back. And it's usually a compliment to a piece that she's just released. So you can see here, it says, see our new books. And then it's got four of the books that came out. One of them was bunnies. And so this one would kind of correspond with the bunnies chart. And she would send, if you, if you were on her automatic as a shop, you would get a stack of these to hand out for free to your customers. And any time as a shop you ordered from her, you, can request, you could request new freebie cards. Well, what ended up happening is some people were starting to sell them on eBay. And I talked to them and they were very discouraged because they felt like it was never really meant to be something that you would sell 
they just wanted to do it, you know, as a, as a thank you to their customers. And so they were kind of discouraged about it, but you know, it's what they ended up doing was they ended up packaging up the ones that they had left and you could buy them in sets. This is set F. And so I think you can get, still get sets A, B, C, D, E, and now F. And they, they can be ordered through Hoffman Distributing. I don't know if Yarn Tree has got them as a distributor, but look, uh, Jen Stitching Niche has got the sets. And so I'll put a link to her below too if you want to look at the sets. And she's got pictures of each, each set has different charts in it. The cool thing about set F is that it comes with three that say, designed exclusively for mini card collection F. What? Exclusive. And so this set comes with these three cute, cute, cute little charts. And I think you could stitch them like in a in an up and downy kind of thing or a side to side kind of thing or separately. But they're just cute. They're small. They're like not even 30 by 30 stitches. And they're just stitched in DMC. So this set comes with these three. And then it comes with, I'll just show you the rest of them. This little B one, so that's four. This little house one, that's five. This little trick or treat one, that's six. A bunny seven, boo, eight, a Santa, nine, and a bunny, 10. And I, th I think they re retail for $9, I'm not sure, but check, check out your local shop, check out your favorite online shop. These are available. This is not like an exclusive to any one shop. They're very um, cute little things. And if you like to send notes to Stitchy Friends, buy a set of these and when you send them a note in the mail, stick one of these in. Okay, so that's my stash flash. Cheap and cheerful last week was to write a letter and a good number of you sent letters and posted on Instagram and I think that's awesome. We all need to send more letters and cards and it's my goal to now try to do it once a week. I just think nice mail is something from years gone by that we all need to really get back to. This week's um, cheap and cheerful is the cheapiest and the cheerfuliest, which is to smile. And so I want you to post on Instagram. Uh, so it's hashtag KSCAC, which stands for Kitten Stitcher Cheap and Cheerful, a picture of you smiling. So take a selfie and smile. And I want you this week to recognize that sometimes, have you ever, have you ever looked at somebody or like noticed that you yourself, you're sitting there and you're like this, like you don't even realize that you're making kind of a grouchy face. I sometimes will be like, you know, like put a smile on and it's amazing. Like just like, I, I feel a lift in my heart when I smile. And when you smile at someone, they're catchy, they smile back. And I think it's something, it's so cheap, i.e. free. It's so cheerful because it's smiley. So we should all smile more often. So please post a pic, a picture to Instagram of you smiling. I don't care how you look. None of us care how you look. You're beautiful. I'm beautiful. Everyone's beautiful. I think we're so hard on ourselves and we think like, oh, I don't have enough makeup on or my hair looks kind of dumb today or, you know, I'm getting older. I have wrinkles. I have gray hair. My eyebrows haven't been plucked anytime recently. Mine have not. But I think if I showed you a picture of someone that was a fellow stitcher and said, isn't she pretty? You would say yes. You would say yes. And you are that pretty person to someone else. And so show us your smile. And I think if you subscribe to hashtag uh, KSCAC, you're gonna see those smiles come in all week from fellow stitchers and it's gonna make you smile and we can spread so much uh, kindness and cheerfulness through a very, very simple act that will take three seconds. So cheap and cheerful. Cheap and cheerful. Someone called it cheap and cheesy this week. I think it ought, her phone auto-corrected and I thought it was so funny. And it's cheesy, that's fine. Cheesy's good, I like cheese. I have an exciting announcement of an event that is free. You can participate from the comfort of your stitching chair in your pajamas. Jen and I, the last like year and a half have started doing sleepovers because why do we stop doing sleepovers when we're 12 or 13 or whatever? Sleepovers are awesome. I think it's good bonding time with your friend. You get to be silly. You get to do whatever you want. It's like, what do you want to do? I don't know. Should we watch a movie? Should we, we, my cousin and I used to watch MTV for hours. We would watch MTV for so long that we would say, see the same videos over and over again. And we had a blast. We would make a cake 
I remember one time we made a cake. It was like a vanilla cake. And we were like, let's put some food coloring in it and make it rainbow cake. We made a rainbow cake. We baked it while it was still warm. We ate it out of the pan with forks. Because you can do that at a sleepover. There are no rules at a sleepover. We would do the thing where you like go in the dark bathroom and you say three good things about George Washington and three bad things about George Washington. And if you paid attention, George Washington's face would appear in the mirror in the darkness. We would do light as a feather, stiff as a board. We would put somebody's bra in water and then put it in the freezer. <laughs> we would throw confetti. Sleepovers are fun. Sleepovers are super fun. Why, as grownups, do we not do sleepovers? And I think it's one of the things we really like about retreats, going to retreats, is that it's kind of that same, like, no rules, just have fun, Chit, blah, 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 let's talk, 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 let's show off our things, let's have a good time together, let's laugh, um, let's drink fireballs, right, ladies? Um, I just think sleepovers are a great thing. Let's all have a sleepover. On June 8th is when the sleepover is. That's the first sleepover. It's Friday, so it's the second Friday of June. I already have a Facebook page called Cross Stitch Sleepover, and I'll put a link below, and you can follow, and you can join. And the idea is that we're all going to have a sleepover virtually. You can have a sleepover with your friends. So if you have local friends and you want to actually do a sleepover, invite them over. If you want to do a live broadcast via YouTube, do that. If you um, want to post on Instagram, we're going to have a hashtag um, XS sleepover is the Instagram hashtag XS sleepover. If you're posting on social media, ask questions. Show pictures of what you're sleeping on, or sleeping on what, or do that. Show pictures of what you're sleeping on. Bring out your sleeping bag. Um, show pictures of your projects that you're working on. Show finishes. Um, share things that are going on in your life. Keep it clean, because I want this to be something that nobody feels like um, uncomfortable. So I don't want really swearing or, you know, things that are, let's just keep it happy and light and cheerful. I, I know there are some younger people that watch FlossTube, and I would like them to be able to participate too. But basically, you just take a night to stitch, watch a movie, watch floss tube, um, record a floss tube video and post it the next day of what you're doing with your, your evening. Get your favorite ice cream. Make popcorn. Whatever you want to do, sleep over. Stay up as late as you can. And then we can, on social media, just check in with each other, share pictures, share laughs, and just have a good time together. And you could even FaceTime if you want with friends and, and have a sleepover, you know, for an hour. Just sit with the FaceTime on and stitch and, and talk with friends near and far. So it's the world's biggest needleworks sleepover. And you can go to Cross Stitch Sleepover on Facebook. And then on Instagram, it's XS Sleepover. Hashtag XS Sleepover. And so it's June 8th. And more information will follow next week. Um, before the actual sleepover. If you have ideas or um, comments, just you know, leave them below. Okay, Stitch Mania is almost over. Thank goodness. What are we doing, guys? We are crazy. We are maniacs. There's a reason it's called mania. I, al I almost lost my resolve this week. I had a day. I'm still struggling with not feeling very well. I, I think I had the flu. I think I had the flu. And I'm still coughing and I'm still, like, I'll get headaches. I'm just not 100%. <clears throat> and there was one night when I just, like, felt so crummy this week. And I sat in my chair and I was like, okay, you got to do stitch mania. I picked up a piece. I was like, oh, I don't feel good. How long is this going to take? And I was like, you know what? You're not enjoying this. Don't do this. You don't need to do this. No one is making you do this. And so I skipped a day. That's fine. You can do that. Do you, do you judge me for skipping a day? No, of course you don't. I don't judge you if you skip a day either. I don't judge you if you didn't do it. Stitch mania. This is, it's, needlework is supposed to be fun. If you're ever doing it and you're like, ugh, slogging through this, stop, stop it. Pick up a different project. Put it away. Go read a book. Take a walk with your dog. But I had to, I've had two finishes already, which is kind of cool. And so one of them is, oh no, now I'm not going to remember who designed this one. Okay, it's Summer House Stitch Works, and it's called Sophia. Isn't that the cutest thing? 
I think it's so cute. This was a chart that Jen got that she was like, I don't think I'll ever stitch this. And I don't know what she decided she didn't like about it. I love it. And when I was up in the attic today getting sweaty, I found a frame that I think is gonna work real well. Oh, it looks a lot brighter on screen than it does in real life. It's a softer version of that teal. I was gonna make it into a pin cushion and I still might, I don't know. But I'm playing with putting it in that frame. I think it's very cute. So that's one finish. Finish number two is here a peep, there a peep. And I've already um, let Jen borrow the pattern. And this is a Brenda Gervais piece, and it's very cute. It was really fun to stitch. I did sub the flower color because I, I think I didn't have it. It was supposed to be Sockeye by Weeks Dye Works, and I couldn't find it or don't have it. But um, now that gets finished on a, an oval box with trim around the edge, which I want to do. I have all three of them. There's a witch, a Santa, and then this chicken. I hope she does like an Uncle Sam. Wouldn't that be cute? I can't find an oval box in that size. Our Hobby Lobby has gotten rid of most of their paper mache. It's gotten really small. Our Joann's doesn't carry paper mache at all, and Michael's didn't have anything either. And so I'm gonna have to order for that, and I'll need to order for the Baltimore um, quilt thing that I'm doing too. So I know that, I think Brenda sells them on her website, and um, I may have to just order from her. I cut my hair this week. <laughs> my husband said, did you get your hair cut? I said, in a way, in a way. I just get to wear, do you ever like at midnight, you're like, I can't take my hair one more second. That's how I am. So I just whack it. And as the week goes on as I, and I find pieces that look terrible, I just cut them off. More money for stash, right guys? Okay, so here are my, here are my mania starts for this week. This one, I meant to start in February, but then it got to be market time and I just was stitching on my own designs. Um, this was one of the ones that I drew for and it's Moulin Rouge by Long Dog Samplers. And my friend Kathy and I were talking yesterday and I don't know we got to talking about long dog samplers and I said you know what one of my favorite ones still is is that Moulin Rouge I just really really like it this was one of it came out a long long time ago I don't know what year probably like right around 2000 ish but it's very pretty it's all one color Quaker style sampler very very pretty um, still available I believe and I started it last night look at how pretty it's gonna be Look at how pretty it's gonna be. And I'm stitching it in this. I had a bunch of this left from my shop days. I had done like some kind of a project for everybody and it's a Vera Soie 103 color 493 and it comes on spools like this and it's just a one ply thread and I've, I've never used it before but I had like, I have like 20 spools of this from something like I said that I did at the shop. And so that's what I'm gonna stitch it in. And I like it so far. Here's the interesting thing. This fabric is 38 count. What, 38 count? 38 count, you can't get it anymore. I remember Norden Crafts like announced that they were down to the last little bit. And I was like, I never heard of 38 count. So I bought what they had left. It was like a yard and a third. So that's what this is. And it's really great. I don't know who made it. I don't know if you can still get it from anybody, but it's really, really cool. Another one that I started this week, I went to Jennifer's 10 days ago, first time I got to see the chickens, and she said, have you seen this one, Yuletide Shanty by Plum Street Samplers? And I was like, no, I don't know how I missed it. It came out in maybe like last year. Yeah, 2017. So Yuletide Shanty. She said, isn't this cute? Look at how cute this is. And so the picture is Santa in a ship, which is cute clever, charming. On the bottom of the drum, you can stitch this little verse. And the verse says, <laughs> the verse says, old Saint Nick, he sails the seas. His beard grows long, so he won't freeze. I like that. But the cutest thing is, and you can't really see it on the picture, there's a giant whale. It's like Moby Dick. And this is what it looks like the whole side of the drum is that giant white whale super cute so i contacted von i was like do you finish drums because i finish drums poorly <laughs> and what i want to do is stitch this cute little phrase over one on the same 40 count that i'm working the drum on here's my start it's in weeks die works it's really fun to stitch like this is one that i'm like i don't want to put this down the colors are so cute I don't know what color this is. It might be navy bean by weeks or by Lakeside Linens. It was a scrap that I had left. But I want to stitch the verse over one and then have it or make it into a fob 
so that there's a matching scissor fob that goes with the, the pin cushion drum. I think that'll be really cute. I hate to stitch something and then have it be on the bottom. I um, told that idea to Jennifer. She was like, I'm just going to put it on the bottom. People can pick it up and look at it if they want to. But she said she didn't want to stitch it on 40 count over one. But I do. And you can definitely get by with a tent stitch if you do that. Okay, another piece that I started this week is ink circles, arranging the KitchenAids. Tracy is so nice. And I love these little charts of her. She has these little charts that I think will fit like in a five by seven frame or something like that, depending on how you stitch them. But I love kitchen. I, I like to cook and I have a KitchenAid mixer. Uh, they're great. They're very sturdy. And so this is my start so far. And I'm trying to be really careful. I've got thread in here, but I'm trying to be really careful with my back so that the black doesn't show through, but I guess I'm not doing a perfect job. Oh, well. So that's fun to stitch. And it's not 40 count. I'm doing it just on a scrap of 32 count Belfast that I had. I think it's antique white probably. Okay, I had this kit, Old Glory. Everybody says they're stitching on 4th of July things, and I thought, golly, I should too. And so this is a, a Shepherd's Bush kit called Old Glory, and it's really cute because it's kind of a band sampler style chart that's done like the flag. And so this is my start on that one. Is it up? It's not right side up. Is just this. And it comes with some over dyed silks and things, and that one's been really fun to work on. This was like my measliest, saddest little start. And I don't know what was going on that night. I think I was talking to someone via Instagram, and I just wasn't getting a lot of stitching done. So I started my betrothed by Birds of a Feather, and I think my friend Sue was gonna start this one too sometime soon. And I think it's really cute. I love how skinny she is. Like she, she's super skinny and his little legs on his horse and his horse is skinny. It says, um, to my betrothed who will one day see this little piece that's been worked by me. For you I give my best endeavor. I'll strive to serve and be obedient ever. And Sue was like, I don't think I'm gonna stitch that verse. I don't like that whole idea of be obedient. Here's the thing, I do. And when my husband and I got married, um, we uh actually i picked out i picked out the songs for our wedding and one of the songs that i picked out was called um it was called like the servant song and it's very pretty it goes um will you let me be your servant let me be as christ to you pray that i may have the grace to let you be my servant too and the idea is i'm getting goosebumps now because it's such a sweet song we are travelers on the journey. It's a very, very pretty little song. And the choir director at the time was like, I've never noticed this song before. And I think it may be like an old shaker hymn or something like that. But the idea is just like, hey, we're, we're doing this together. Let's serve each other. Be, let me be obedient to you doesn't mean let me be your slave and you get to do whatever you want. It means let's, let's help each other get through this. Life is tricky. So I'm, I'm cool with the verse. So anyway, like I said, this was my saddest start. The first night, all I got done was the number five and the number six. <laughs> How many stitches is that? It's like 12 stitches. It's, that was a dumb start, but it's going to be really fun. This is a piece of gravestone linen by S Stitches and Spice, I think, in, out of Australia. And um, it's stitched in weak style works, and I'm using one strand, which covers very nicely. Okay, two more starts. I saw that this was like the whole, uh, Holly and Anita were, and, uh, and Marlene at Stitching by the Lake were talking about the, the retreat. What retreat was it? The New Jersey retreat? That there was like this big to-do because somebody from Canada, I think it was, stitched this Henrietta, this little chicken. And it was, uh, you know, one of those um, gift things where you like steal from each other. And then this was just, everybody wanted this because it's, how cute is that? So I went ahead and started it. I had the chart. This is just a scrap of 40 count linen. I think it's supposed to be stitched on 35. I don't even know what color this is. I think it's an R&R. &R. But I love you, the, the green that I'm using right now that's called for is called Tarragon by Weeks, and it's so pretty. But then, so you can finish this little, it comes with the chart to finish this little, I don't know if it's a pin keeper, if it's a um, tape measure. But then there's what the back of it looks like. It's super cute. So that's that. And then my last start, and I can't show you the chart because all I have left is the page, is this one by Birds of a Feather. It is called like Christmas Bird, and it was in the 1999 Just Cross Stitch Ornament issue. 
And they had ornaments in there a few times and I've stitched a number of them. And I stitched this one for my niece Claire a good long time ago, 10 years ago anyway. And when I gave it away, I was like, you know how like sometimes you make something for someone you're like, this is hard to give away. Those are great gifts. If, you, if it's hard to give away, that means it's a good gift. So I'm stitching it now for myself. And so the deal is you stitch this bird and it ends up looking kind of like a fish. But then what you do is you finish it. I'm going to see if I can do this. So it looks, you fold it in half like this. So then it's double sided and it hangs from the, oh, there goes my needle, hangs from the top. You get it? And it's, it's really, really cute. The holes, the white spots you see here in the red um, are little red Mill Hill beads. And it makes it kind of blingy and sparkly. And I don't know that birds of a feather really use beads very often, but it's very, very cute. And so the 99, just cross-stitch ornament issue, look for that one. Okay, so that's my mania. What am I all into? Um, okay, what am I all into this week? One of the things I'm all into is um, Nicola White. She's here on YouTube and she has a little company called Tideline Art. She is a mudlarker and I had never heard of mudlarking before. Um, she lives in, I think, like the London area. And she popped up in my suggestion feed. And it's really cool. Mudlarking is when you go to the shore of a river and you look for treasures. And it's because she lives in and around London, there are really cool treasures. And so I'm going to put a link to her channel below. They're anywhere from like, you know, 10 to 20 to 25 minutes each video. And she just takes you along for the hunt. And it is shocking what she finds just washed up that has survived the centuries. Like she finds things from the 16 and 1700s. Coins, pipes, clay pipes. She finds clay pipes all the time. Oftentimes they have not broken at all. She finds old bottles, inkwells, pins from like the 1700s. They're so cool. Uh, she even will do things like she'll um, pick up all the plastic garbage on a beach if she sees a lot of garbage and she'll kind of collect colors make a, a piece of art in the sand, take pictures of it, and then collect the garbage and, and dispose of it properly to clean up the shore. So anyway, Nicola White, Tideline Art, Mudlarking. It's like a treasure hunt, and she takes you along, and it's really fun. And she's very, very sweet. She's got the greatest accent. She's very, very gentle. I think, I think you stitchers would really enjoy her a lot. Another thing that I'm all into this week is Best Buy Appliance Electronics Recycling. And I've done this for years. I don't remember how I found out about it, but Best Buy, which is you know a company that sells speakers and computers and things, will recycle your used electronics for free. And you don't have to make an appointment. There's no charge. You can, if it's something that's hard to carry, you can go in and ask them for help carrying it in. I have read that they limit you to two items per time. I think they don't want you pulling up with a truck. But, you know, I think if you brought three, they probably wouldn't. Mine, I don't think a lot of people do it because they're always kind of like, what do we do when I, when I show up with recycling? But I had a big printer here that I used to use to print my charts that wasn't working anymore. It was old. And then a keyboard of ours that had crapped out. And so I took it there. They helped me carry the printer in. They recycle it. And then the neat thing is, is that they end up making a very, very small profit on what they recycle. What they do is they grind stuff up they separate out the glass the precious metals the plastics everything gets you can do old cell phones cords you know keyboards remote controls old monitors old tvs any of that stuff and you just take it there and they grind it down and, and make it into you know glass and plastic and things and they make like um lawn furniture and you know whatever and so it's a great way to keep your electronics out of the landfill and really have them live kind of a second life. I'm all into the new Han Solo movie. I went and saw it on Thursday night, and I know Bendy Stitchy doesn't get to go for a few days yet, so I'm not going to ruin anything. But I will say, if you like Star Wars and the Star Wars universe, it is a fun movie. The guy who plays Han Solo does a great job. I don't think anyone could have done a better job. He's not Harrison Ford. He's not but he did a great job. And it was, if you just go into it with an open mind and you're just like, hey, let's sit down and have fun, super fun movie. Last thing that I'm all into this week is popcorn. And we eat a lot of popcorn here. And the funny thing is, is our kids don't really like popcorn, but Steve and I make popcorn all the time. Um, I grew up, we, we ate a fair amount of popcorn. And then, you know, back in whenever it was, they started coming out with a microwave popcorn. It was like, oh, this is so easy. Microwave popcorn's not very good. So 
sorry, it's not. It's not as good as homemade popcorn and it's more expensive. We have a Whirly Popper, which you can find online. Um, they, you know, probably 25 bucks-ish is what they are. They're great. You just use it on your stove top. I use, I have found that the best popcorn is the Walmart Great Value brand or whatever. So like all of those big name brand popcorns, they don't pop as big, they don't pop as cleanly. The um, popcorn shells are chewier and like get stuck in your teeth more. For whatever reason, the Walmart generic brand is the best. It takes just a couple of minutes to pop it up, a little bit of oil, you pop the popcorn, you, you twist a little handle so it's manual as it pops. I put three tablespoons of butter on an entire batch and um, a little bit of popcorn salt and it's a great treat. It's really inexpensive. It's very cheerful. I feel like popcorn, you know, makes noise and um, my husband and I share it and it's just great. Why not have popcorn? Okay, so that's what I'm all into this week, except for popcorn. I'm into that all the time. A quick S Ward update. This is my little red pashmina silk cashmere sampler. The fabric has arrived. I'm going to be kidding those this week. Next week, I will make a video and tell you how you can buy it. I'm very excited. So that just showed the fabric just showed up yesterday. I'm super, super excited. Um, okay, giveaway this week. I'm going to announce the, the winner of, of last week's giveaway in just a minute. But first, I'm going to do the giveaway because I like to mix up the, I don't want you guys to expect the same thing every time. I don't want you to watch me and be like, oh, well, I guess it's, you know, five minutes in, it must be time for blah, blah, blah. So giveaway this week is Charles Wysocki's puzzle, Clamors at Hodges. And um, I love Charles Wysocki puzzles. And I feel like cross-stitchers, like we are kind of puzzle people, aren't we? Because it's, when you follow a chart, it's like what thread goes where, here's where it goes. You got to find things and put them in the right place. And that's really what a puzzle is. Um, it's a thousand piece puzzle. They're beautiful when they're done. And you can get them at um, the Charles Wysocki puzzles at Hobby Lobby. Target carries them. I haven't seen them at Walmart. Walmart, I think, carries kind of a knockoff brand. Um, and you can find them online. The thing with the Charles Wysocki puzzles is they get valuable. Like I, they had a couple of Halloween puzzles and I saw them, I don't know, on Pinterest or something. And I was like, oh, I like that one. I wonder if I can find it on eBay. I did for $80. <laughs> so, you know, if you get them, like this was $14.99. I got it at Hobby Lobby for half price or with my 40% off coupon, which is a pretty inexpensive little thing to do for the weekend. So this is the, this is the prize. And so in order to be entered, I want you to tell me what your favorite board game is or what your favorite card game is or, um, gosh, what's mine? I love Boggle. I love Boggle and I love Scrabble. I like any word games. I would say those are my favorites. And um, when I was little, I wanted so badly Mousetrap. You remember the Mousetrap game? And I was like, oh, it's the coolest thing. We never got it. So I bought it as an adult and it is cool. And the game part of it isn't that fun, but it is fun to make the little mouse trappy thing and then set everything off. Okay, the winner of last week's giveaway, pause for effect, is Linda Schindhelm. And so she wins um, a sample of each of the 10 threads that I showed last time. She wins um, all 10. And so um, send me an email below. I'll put my email address below in the comments and you can go ahead and comment and collect your prize. So congratulations, Linda. She said, the question was, what are you working on this week? She said she's working on Shepherd's Bush's stone snowman kit, and she's loving the feel of the silks. And so that's great. So congratulations, Linda. Okay. Last thing for today is actually a list of 10, because like I said, I like to mix up the, the order that I do things in. I've got 10, 10 show and tells. And so these are just things that are oddities, things that I have at home that I'm just, they're just show and tell us, things with a little story behind them. <laughs> Item number one, DMC floss on a cone. You can get this on eBay or um, shops can order it too. But I had found some of these really inexpensively and I sold them in my Lucky Rabbit store. I, I ended up with only two of them left. But what I did at the Lucky Rabbit was I, I had these little glass head pins that I got on eBay from Germany, which I think are cool. And then I just cut out pieces of scrapbook paper, punched a little hole in them, and I use it as a decoration. So this sits on my shelf, and I just think it's really cute. So that's what that is. I don't, what color is that? Does it say? 
um, eight ninety eight, and it's four hundred and twenty five meters. I think I paid, you know, like I don't know, five dollars for that or something. Okay, item number two. This is something I keep on my desk here. When you have cats, things get tipped over, and so I I like to keep pens on my desk. And then this is this is a counter. It's a pencil that I use when I'm reproducing samplers, and I use a needle stuck in the end to help me count stitches. But I got this little, um, I guess you'd call it a cauldron at a, an antique store for like $4.50, which is really neat. I think it's very, very cool. But I had one time um, bought, let's see, I'll show them to you. These are called Job's Tears. And I had bought them on Etsy, and you can still find them on Etsy. Job's Tears. And um, this comes from a plant that is a grass, and these are the seeds. And they're oftentimes used on, in rosaries. And they come in kind of different colors, a lot of times just shades of blue. Um, and I think they're a really pretty color. And you can actually use them as beads. Like there's a hole that goes all the way through. And so um, that's how they were used on rosaries and things. But I use them as filler in my cauldron to hold my pens up. I think it's cute. I enjoy it, it makes me happy. This is something I got at a thrift store. <laughs> it's a little frog. And I saw it and I was like, what is it? Okay, so it came with this. It kind of sounds like a frog, doesn't it? And I'm sure somebody got him on, you know, like they went to Tahiti or something or someplace, but they got this little frog and I, I bought this for a couple of dollars. I just liked it. Something, something weird. Okay, this one is going to be tricky to show. These... My friend Sue gave me these. Sue always gives me really thoughtful gifts. Like she finds things that are kind of odd and strange and I just really like that. It was a set of alphabet blocks that are kind of um, pop culture-y, you know, just kind of like um, kitschy, retro. So like this one's block has got litter box, dentures, lawnmower, donut, and then they each have a letter and a number, I think. So it's, oh, that's an L and a D. And so here we'll do a, a couple more. Here's uvula, mustache, underpants, and meatloaf. I think they're cute. I keep them on my piano. Uh, odd, joystick, outhouse, jackalope. So that's J and O. Those are all J and O words. Uh, let's do one more. Yard sale, robot, <laughs> yoga, and raygon. So those are really fun. I don't remember the company that makes these. They're really, really cute. It was a super fun gift to get. And I just make different stacks of them. Oh, look at here's neighbor. Hi, neighbor. Kazoo, Neanderthal, Karate. So that was a very nice gift and I enjoy it. Okay, another show and tell is um, when I went to Seattle a few years ago, we went to a glass blowing studio and they actually help you blow glass. You have a number of things that you can choose and there are slightly different prices. I think they run anywhere from 25 to $40 a piece. You get to pick out the color of glass and the accent color. This is what I made. And you know, they do, they really do most of the work. They're like, okay, spin this now and now blow in it. So when you blow in it, you blew it, you know, like you did the breath part. Um, but they do, you get to spin it in the fire and everything. It's really cool. And, but it was a fun experience and we did it as a family. My kids each made something too. Um, Graham made a cool egg and Harrison made a little purple bowl. But so that's what I made and it's just kind of like a paperweight. Now my um, brother's family will let their kids make Christmas ornaments at this company to give as gifts. And it's kind of like, they only do like one or two a year. And so one year it was my turn to get the ornament. And this is the one that I got from the same glass blowing studio. It's absolutely beautiful. And um, I love it. I'm, I don't hang it on my tree because cats, but I, um, I'm getting ready to move into my, my craft room uh, right behind me here. That's gonna be my room. Harrison's gonna help me paint. I picked out some paint chips this week. <coughs> we'll clean the carpet, move stuff in. And I, I have a couple of these glass ornaments. I have one that I got from my sister when they got married. That was her gift to her attendants. And I'm, I think I'm going to hang them from the ceiling in the corner 
because I really, really enjoy it. And so here is, they, they also sent me pictures of Claire making the ornaments. Let's see. So that's, that's her when she made the ornament. And it really was special. And then, and then um, I know when my mom got this note that she got weepy. Here's the note that they sent with it. Claire. Uh, Teresa, Claire made this ornament just for you. She picked out the colors, chose the design, and blew her own breath into the ball. When you hang it on the tree each year, you'll be hanging a part of Claire. She thought you would like bright, cheery colors just like you. Merry Christmas. Love, Pete, Anna, Claire, and Max. So it's very, very nice. Um, blowing glass. Maybe you have a local place that will let you do that. I really highly recommend it as an, um, a really cool experience if you you know, are having people visit you or if you just want to try something new. It's, it's fascinating to see how they do it. And um, glass blowers are cool people, man. If you want to see some good tattoos, go hang out at a glass blowing studio. Okay, another show and tell. I haven't looked for a while, but there was a while that I was looking for and finding really cool bobbin lace on Etsy. And you can search for bobbin lace, and I would find this beautiful, filled with cat, it was not filled with cat hair at the time, beautiful bobbin lace um, on Etsy. And I don't know if you've ever seen how bobbin lace is made. It's pretty amazing. You um, have a uh, fine thread on bobbins that all hang down off of this velvet covered kind of slanty slopey thing and you you do this and you you have the pattern underneath and there's a bunch of pins. It's really really cool. I don't know how to do it. When I belonged to the Embroiderers Guild we had people in the guild who knew how to do bobbin lace and it was cool. This is an, another one. It's a thinner one and then uh, this is another piece that I got at the time, and I, I didn't pay very much for them. Certainly not as much as they're worth for as much time as these take. Look how pretty that is. What will I do with them? I don't know. It's one of those things you kind of hate to use because I don't want to cut it. Like, it's amazing. And this one seller that I bought from would send them wrapped on antique photos that she found, which I think is really cool. So those are two of the photos that I got with them. They're kind of on cards. So that's another show and tell item. I found this at a thrift store. I love it. Hannah painted this, Hannah Lampo. I think I probably paid $2 for it. I'm just tickled they didn't just throw this away, that they let me buy it. Um, it's, the title is Kitty, artist Hannah Lampo, and then she actually signed it too on the back. Hannah Lampo. Here's what I like about this. And it's part of the reason why I like samplers. I think when we're younger, we don't um, we don't have those a lot of those guards up. You know, like when if if I said, "Hey, will you draw something for me?" You'd be like, well, "I'm not a very good drawer." When you tell a kid to draw, they're like, "Yeah, I'll draw." This is a great. She did a great job. I think it's beautiful. I think it's awesome. I enjoy this so much. And it's kind of sad to me that somebody put this in the giveaway box, but it has found a good home because I love it. And then I, I think that, you know, when you look at old samplers, you see these girls and their stitches weren't always 100% accurate. Mine aren't always 100% accurate. And I think that's okay. I think that sometimes you just got to put the joy in your heart down in your art and let it shine. And so that's Hannah's little painting that she did. I just love it. Okay, this was something I bought a year ago. I was uh, on looking around on eBay and I found a set of Quaker boxes. I was doing a search for Quaker boxes. And I'm going to pick them up. There's, it's six of them. Pick them up as the stack. So there's the big one at the bottom. And they go down to really small. And I'll show you the smallest. So the smallest one you can see here is the size of my hand. It's very small. Oop, there's a bunch of thread in there. I don't know what that is. So um, very, very nicely made little boxes with the copper nails. And they're all in great shape. I think somebody bought them and never stored anything in them at all. They came with the card um, that it was by, Char they were by Charles Harvey from Kentucky. I'm not sure he's still living. Um, I believe these boxes were probably made in the 90s. And I was able to find that he made boxes for some museums, like Shaker Museums. 
And um, so here it says handcrafted shaker furniture. And you can see that even at the time, they were not inexpensive. You know, the biggest one there was a $65 box with lids. Yep. And so I got six of them and I paid $80 for all of them. And someone had found them at an estate sale or at a, a flea market or whatever. So I don't know what they paid, but I was thrilled to get all six of them for 80 bucks. I mean, you figure that's not even $15 a piece. And um, I, I love them to pieces. I have stuff stored in the bottom when I fig figured out as I was getting ready for this video, I was like, oh, that's where that went. I was missing a pattern and some threads. I was like, oh, that's where they were, put them in the box. So these are in my stitching area and they will definitely go in my stitching room, but I thought I'd show those off. I just, and they're two <clears throat> slightly different colors. I don't know if you can see, like this one is a little bit lighter than this one. And so they kind of are two different shades of this real antique blue. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I just love them. Some of them don't, aren't painted on the inside. And I believe that there's one size missing. There are the four small ones and then it feels like there's a jump to the next size, but that's fine. Love it. Okay, another show and tell. Swatch watch. I graduated high school in 1988. And so yes, this is my 30th uh, graduation celebration this year. So let's see if I can get this up here. Lollipops. Swatch watch. I got this, my grandma died like um, 10 years ago-ish or so. And we went back to New Jersey for the funeral and my parents and I went into New York City for the day and they had a Swatch store. And Swatch watches were like the rage in the 80s. They're, they have this kind of rubbery plastic, what do you call this thing? You know, wristband um, and, and plastic, but they're just cool. And they always had like pop, kind of pop art kind of designs. I had a Swatch watch. I had a really cool Swatch watch that I paid $35 for at Dayton's department store in Fargo. And it was a men's Swatch watch and it was pale gray and it was very steampunky for the time. You could see all the workings of the, of the watch within it. And I wore it all the time. And my brother, who was three years younger than I am, so he was probably 15, one day said, can I borrow your Swatch watch? Can I wear it to school? Cause, and I was like, yeah, that's fine, that's cool. He gave it to a girl. He gave it to a girl. He borrowed it and he gave it to a girl. And recently, I found this swatch watch and I had never worn it. I bought it that weekend of my grandma's funeral and then I just, it was in a drawer. So I had my husband recently replace the battery, which was long dead and I've been wearing it. And so when I found this, I texted my brother and we hadn't talked about it for years. And I said, hey, you still kind of owe me a swatch watch. And his reply was, that's fair. And I said, did you at least get a kiss for it? He said, no. I said, did you think you were going to? He said, not really. I said, why? And he said, Catholic, <laughs> which if you're Catholic, maybe you'll understand that. But anyway, brothers, little brothers. Okay, so that was nine. My 10th thing, I looked around, I was like, where is it? Where is it? And I found it. It was in, so that was my craft room for like several months. And then Harrison moved back. It's a binder, which isn't real exciting, but it's full of pictures of really cool samplers so this was i think i started this like before pinterest was even a thing and i'm wondering if we're going to come across any so anyway these are just samplers that i have saw online a lot of them on ebay or on auction sites just samplers that i was like oh i really like the border on that or oh i like the verse on that or look at that bird that's interesting um just for whatever reason like them and the problem the problem with online auctions is th and things is that samplers will be available and then they're taken down a lot of times. And so you'll never see them again. And the thing is, if they go into a private collection, the likelihood that they'll show up in a book or anything where you'd be able to see it again is very small. And I have a whole bunch more now that I have to print off. I keep a folder on my desktop and then occasionally I'll just print a bunch of them so that I can keep hard copies of them. And it really is fun to just sit and look through this book and look at all the beautiful samplers. There are so, so many of them and all of them are so different. And you just, you learn a lot just by looking at samplers. And so um, that's just something I've been doing for a number of years now is um, just making, making, you know, pages of the, the samplers that I see that I like and I just use it for enjoyment. Just look at them and, and um, 
you know, just enjoy saying like, oh, this is what I like about that one, or look at how interesting, you know, the shape of this is. Okay, so that was 10. That was my list of 10 show and tell things. Feel free to use that idea. We all have these things that we accumulate over the course of our lives that are kind of worth a show and tell that have an interesting story behind them and that's what those were. All right, that is enough of my blabbering for this week. I thank you for joining me. I will be making a video again soon with more details about the S word sampler. That's this week, about in, in about a week, those kits will be ready and you'll be able to buy them. I know a lot of you are anxious to get your hands on those. I am making 100 kits this first time. So pay attention because they may sell out quickly. It's not something that I will put a, you know, like I'm, I'm making 100 period, never again. I didn't want to get into, I don't, I don't know how many of them are going to sell. And so I didn't want to make 500 of them and sell 300 and then be sitting on 200 kits. So I'm making 100. If it goes really well and it sells out and there are a bunch of people who still want them, I'll make them again. I've, st I've got more fabric on order to do that. And th the silks will take, a, you know, maybe a couple of weeks to come in if I need them again. But um, it's really going to be fun. And, and there are two extra things that you get with each kit that are really going to make it fun. But I'll announce that next time. And um, have a great Memorial Weekend. This is definitely, you know, a time to remember people who have given their lives for our country. And um, military, of course, my dad was a Marine during the Vietnam War. He did not serve in Vietnam, although he offered. Um, his commanding officer liked my dad too much and wouldn't let him go. And my dad was actually, he's still, he's still with us. He's a great guy. He was in the Marine Corps band, and so he performed for presidents, and he has lots of great stories. I know that he, once or twice at least, did parties at John McCain's father's place. Um, he was, my, my father was stationed in Hawaii. And so we, of course, give thanks to the brave servicemen and women, not only who have, who have died, but also the ones that served and gave of their time and their talents and their psyche and their effort. Like, we just so appreciate the service that they have given. Um, but I, I'm, I'm thankful, too, for our policemen and women, um, firefighters, ambulance drivers, doctors. We have so many people. You know, Mr. Rogers tells, tells us to look for the helpers. And he, when he was young, he, he was worried about something, and he talked to his mom about it. And, he, and it's, it's kind of like the school shootings these days, that it's very easy to go, oh, my Lord, the world is a terrible place. How will we ever survive? How will we ever get through this? And his mom said, look for the helpers. And that's a good thing to remember, that when terrible events happen, there are all kinds of people that step up and make things better. And those are the people that we need to concentrate on and focus on. And we can be those people, too. We can help when our help is needed. Okay, I will see you guys next time. Have a good week. Happy stitching. Bye-bye. The chickens are getting bigger. Are you guys getting bigger? Look at how cute you all are. Huh? Are you getting sassy? Are you sassy? Look at how cute. Buck, 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 buck. Cute little baby chickens. Busy growing. Testing volume one, two, three. Testing volume one, two, three. Testing, testing, testing. <laughs>